Hey, it's Ron at RadiologicTechnologist.com. Um, I saw an interesting question this morning on Reddit that I thought for sure I'd answered, but um, I don't think I have. Somebody asked, what do radiology technology students exactly do during clinicals? And even though I've written over 80 articles about uh, radiography, I don't think I've talked about the actual clinical rotations. I've talked about how to choose them and uh, what you get out of them and how they're really a big giant job interview and that kind of stuff. And you can find all that at uh, the radiologictechnologist.com. But as for someone looking into the program, asking what exactly we do during our clinical rotations, that's a great question. So in order to become a radiographer, you have to graduate from an accredited program and do a certain number of hours of clinical rotations. And those clinical rotations um, are just an old-fashioned apprenticeship, just like you, you would do in several other uh, journeyman-type uh, careers like you know, welding and plumbing and, and uh, HVAC and all those technical skills. You have to shadow somebody else that knows what they're doing, and they teach you the craft. And that's what the clinical rotations are for us in radiography. Um, Last I checked, I believe it was about 2,000 hours. I remember it took forever. It was literally almost two solid years of clinical hours, 40 hours a week or 32 hours a week. I think when I went 15 years ago, um, we split it up and did, I think, four eights during the week and then class on Fridays or something like that. But it's really mix and match. You can, you can do the hours that your school allows you. At one point, um, I think I did, I did weekends on my clinical rotation so that I could work during the week. But um, what we do is you, you show up at the beginning of whatever shift you're assigned to, say you're working eight to five uh, in a hospital and you can do, your clinicals will bounce around from hospital to outpatient clinic to ortho clinic, anywhere and everywhere that the school and the hospital or healthcare entity deem is busy enough to have a student there. Schools typically won't let students go to a place that's too slow because you have a set number of competencies that you have to complete in order to graduate. And a competency is uh, proving that you know how to do a particular exam. So to put it kind of broadly, uh, just pretend there's a big list of all the different kinds of x-rays that you can do. And the clinical instructor's job is to teach you or observe you or watch you perform each and every single one of those exams on the list. Um, the goal of the program or the goal of clinical rotations is for you to see everything on that list or everything that a, an, an x-ray tech may do in their career, see it all, do it all. In fact, they used to say, see one, do one, teach one, because that's how you become truly proficient watch the clinical instructor do it or another tech, do one yourself while you're being monitored, and then do one on your own. And that last one, once you perform, let's say you're, you're comping, we call it comping, let's say you're comping on a hand x-ray. Uh, you'll do several hand x-rays, however many it takes for you to get it down to be able to do it on your own. And once your clinical instructor or whoever's assigned to watch you, it can be any licensed tech can sign you off. Once they see you complete a successful hand x-ray all the way through, meaning your paperwork, your patient instruction, your technique, uh, making sure you hung the film correctly, all the different parameters of each competency, they'll sign you off on a sheet. You have a comp sheet with hand x-ray, foot x-ray, ankle x-ray, you know, all the things, fluoro, oh, uh, C-arm, all the things you can do, and somebody has to sign those off. And then at the end of the uh, school or, or course, you have to submit that as part of your documentation that you've seen everything and done everything. Now, there, there's a chance you won't see everything. Um, you may not get a lot of, let's say, OR experience at the places where you go. Um, if you end up at a smaller hospital, uh, it may not have very many OR suites and just may not be busy. So the ART allows or, and the school allows for you to... Um, or what they call it, a ghost competency or something like that, a simulation. You can simulate doing, I think it was up to five, I don't know what it is nowadays, but you could simulate 
X number of your competencies in order to complete them. So let's say you never saw, um, I don't know, mandible. Um, you, you could get a um, simulation or a, a skull or a, a dummy head or whatever the, the phantom or whatever the tool is that the school or the facility may have for you to x-ray and you just show how you would x-ray that and earn your competency that way. Um, so what do you do during a clinical rotation? You, you show up at the same time everybody else does. You do all the work they do until the end of the shift and then you go home and next day you uh, wash, rinse, repeat. So you are a working stiff, unpaid for almost two years. And that's one of the hardest things apart being a, a hardest things about being a radiography student is not only are you paying for the program and it can be anywhere from $6,000 to $50,000. Not only are you paying for it, you're working for free for two years. So that's part of why you see us be a little prideful when somebody calls us a technician or calls us button pushers. You know, we, we can laugh about it, but we put a lot of work into what we do and we're damn good at what we do and we're very prideful about it. So we like to teach students because that's the next generation and students help us to recall things we don't remember anymore. They'll ask questions about stuff we hadn't talked about since school. So it's always beneficial for a clinical site to have students. And, you know, at times it's rough. At times you're busy. You'd rather just do it yourself and get it over with and get on to the next patient, but you gotta stop and you know, let the student do it. And it takes forever, it seems like sometimes, but it's part of the whole cycle of life. You have to train that next generation because at some point, you're gonna want some time off and somebody's gonna take that shift. And the most call hungry people are the freshly graduated students who have some debt to pay off. So um, that's what your clinical is all about. It's, it's becoming a tech, apprenticing under a technologist. And you will get bounced around from tech to tech to tech. You may have one or two clinical instructors assigned to you, but they're not always gonna be the ones showing you around. That clinical instructor may just say, hey Bob, will you take Sally up to the OR with you and show her how to do the C-arm? And or, or hey, uh, Bob, will you just keep uh, Sally in the ER today with you and show her how to do the traumas? Um, so you, you can get assigned to a tech for the whole day, you can get assigned to a unit for the whole day, or you can just be handed different things all day long. So you've got to be very fluid when you're an x-ray student because not only could you go to any part of the hospital to do an x-ray but uh, technologists all kind of have their own particular way of doing things you know I remember doing chest x-rays and somebody do it at you know a hundred at five or a hundred at ten with a grid somebody else may do it 95 at five just when you think you get it all dialed in, they'll say, no, no, bump your KV down a couple, you know, and it's like, it's the same outcome. But that's just how it is. You are there to learn from whoever's teaching you, you do it their way. And when you become a tech, then you do it your own way. As long as you follow the basic protocols. I mean, you can't just start shooting three view chest or something crazy. If a protocol is a two view, AP and lateral, you do an AP and lateral, you don't throw an oblique in there. Uh, and a little, a little advice, we know it's possible to do some additional stuff, but we don't necessarily tell the doctors or they'll be ordering it all the time. Like portable two view chests. Is it possible? Yes. Do we want to be doing those things all the time? Heck to the no. We don't want to do those because they're hard. Harder. It's possible because we're superstars. But it's tough to do, man. You want good quality images, which means taking them down to the room, putting them in the in the controlled environment, and doing it at a wall, Bucky, and getting the best possible image. That's what we're all about, right? Best possible image, lowest possible dose, and then we move on. So I hope this kind of helps explain what we do at clinicals. Um, you bounce around all over the hospital. You go to outpatients, imaging centers, ortho clinics, uh, pain clinics, wherever. The school and the facility agree that there's enough volume to put you at, and you're just an apprentice for as long as necessary. So if you have any more questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm happy to, ap uh, happy to answer them. I've been doing this since 2003, so I've been in it for a little while. I'm actually an administrator 
who's gone back to doing tech work. Uh, I'm doing both now, so I'm I'm administrating uh, or administering uh, at a hospital. Uh, but when I'm not doing something in the office, I'm out on the floor. So um, I've gotten back into ultrasound. I've gotten back into X-ray and CT. I'm not even going near MRI for a while. Uh, those are the four modalities I've done for the last 20 years. But man, for seven years or so, I was off the floor. So I'm making all those same mistakes all over again. Uh, rotating my lateral chest, uh, stopping my CT scan too quick, can't figure out how to add a scout back in. Crap, I only got the AP scout, I need the lateral scout, I can't figure out how to add it back in, have to start all over again. But that's what we all have to go through when we're learning and, and you should never be too prideful to admit that you need some help, you need somebody to show you. And uh, it's a whole lot of fun, I love radiography. That's why I've created the radiologictechnologist.com with, I'm up to like 80 articles on there now that answer a whole bunch of questions for people that are interested. And uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I hope it was helpful. I gotta get to work.